What's up everybody? My name's Joey. This is Eclectics Workshop and today I'm going to show you how my wife and I built this dope ass Bluetooth speaker right here in our garage. All right, let's get it. Warning, working with power tools and unprotected lithium cells can be extremely dangerous. Only operate tools and use unprotected cells if you have been trained to do so. Also, do it at your risk. For this project, we're going to need two 1 inch diameter PVC pipes cut to a length of 3.5 inches. We're also going to need two pieces of half inch thick plywood cut to 7 and 3 quarter inch square, two pieces cut to 7 and 3 quarter by 6 and 3 quarters, and two more cut to 6 and 3 quarter inch square. Alright, let's get started. Project started. Equip safety gear. Ready to start. So this is birch plywood. It's supposedly really good for sound quality. I'm not sure, I don't have any real test equipment, but I've used everything from particle board, MDF, and pine plywood. They all sound pretty good. Um, use whatever you can, whatever's in your budget or whatever you have lying around. The best way that I've found to do this is to first cut two seven and three quarter inch by two foot strips. Then take one strip and cut two seven and three quarter inch squares. Make sure to save your leftover piece. Now that we've got our two strips and our two squares cut, we can move our fence down to six and three quarters for our last six cuts. Now that the fence is moved, we can take our other strip and cut two six and three quarter by seven and three quarter inch almost squares, and from the leftovers, cut our two six and three quarter inch squares. Never try to remove a piece of wood while the blade is still running. Ask me how I know. Now that we've got all of our pieces cut, we're gonna mark our center points for the component cup that we made, also for our speaker and for our two ports. We'll grab our carpenter's pencil, make a mark there, and then boom, make a mark there. That is the center point for the speaker. Next, we're gonna grab the back. We're gonna go here, we're gonna go about right there-ish, and we're just gonna make a mark. Next thing we're gonna do is shove a thorn down to the one and a half inches. So we got one and a half inches, we're gonna make a mark here, and we're gonna go boom. Make a mark there. Then we're gonna boom. Make a mark there. Then we're gonna make a mark right there. Boom. With everything marked, let's go grab what we need for the drill press. Three and a quarter inch, pull some. Nice. One inch, four some good. Let's get it. Okay, I have the PVC pipe port tube and it doesn't quite fit in the hole. To fix this, I take a 0.5 millimeter fine point pin, line up the port and trace around it. This will guide me on the oscillating spindle sander. Now that we know the PVC pipes fit, we can clean off the sander. Next, we need to mark our PVC pipes and cut them down to size. And do that. And then just beep. Good enough. So, luckily for me, my wife Krista built this table saw sled out of scrap wood. I think it'll be perfect for cutting this PVC pipe. Honestly, normally I just hot glue these in and it's always been fine, but I saw this on the shelf that my wife bought the other day. Um, so I'm gonna give it a try and see what I do. All right, now the bottle says, Press together or clamp for a minimum of 15 minutes. Do not stress joints for 24 hours. All right, sounds good. There was once a day that I, I am back in the workshop and this glue should be more than dry because it's been, yeah, too many days. Anyways, the quick and thick seems to have done the trick. It's nice and secure. It seems like it's made a really good seal. I think I'm actually gonna use this for the rest of the project. So I'm gonna be using a nail gun, but if you don't have one of those, it just takes a little bit more time. You just have to use the clamps, wait for the glue to dry before you move on to the next piece. Whenever you're gluing stuff, especially on a wood surface or any other surface, I do recommend using a little bit of wax paper. It just helps prevent the glue from sticking to anything else. What I do is I take two pieces of uh, scrap wood, and then I take my base, one clamp, tighten it down, nice and tight, doesn't move much, make sure that's flush against it. I run this one up against that, and then I set my next clamp. What this does is it allows me to very quickly line up my edges and know that I'm good. Now that we have the jig set up, we can get rolling on this project. 
I went ahead and put on my eye and ear protection since I will be using this nail gun. So to start, we can get a little bit of glue on our brush. Ooh, it's thick. I guess that's why they call it the quick and thick. Go ahead and uh, smear this on here. Now that I've got it glued, I can pop it back in the jig. Line up my first side. Now it's time for the nail gun. You look great. I like you. I can't wait. Our first time. Our first day. You're so fine. I'm so late. Reload. You sip wine. I drink Supply straight. Air. Don't waste time. I almost forgot. We gotta make this thing square before we nail it. Sometimes you will miss. But try. Try again. So the best way I found to do this is to construct one top and one side and one bottom and one side. Then after you get those, you can put the glue on the top and bottom pieces and then just fuse them together. Put your nails in and then you're good to go. Now that we have the main structure of the box built, I like to go ahead and take a little bit of my glue that I've been working with and I like to just dab it into the corners here. Now what this does is when it dries, it'll create a nice seal and we'll make sure that the box is airtight so that we don't have any weird sound effects or anything like that coming from it. Now that we have the main structure of the box belt glued up and nailed in, we can go ahead and glue on the front face. Grab our glue and apply a whole lot. Don't be afraid of it. It ain't gonna hurt you. If you have excess glue leaking out of the sides, all you have to do is get a wet paper towel or a wet rag and wipe it up. Now it's time to glue the back on. Now that we've got the box fully constructed, I'm going to wait for the glue to dry and I'm going to grab me something to eat. Before I ate, I actually went ahead and filled all the holes with the sandable wood filler. But now that I'm back, everything's nice and dry and we can go ahead and start sanding. Now that everything is sanded, I can finally get the painting done. Uh, to do this, I just used a PVC pipe propped up with two chairs running through the holes and rotisserie fi it oh. and paint it that way. Yeah. Now that I've got the base coat of paint on, it's time to take this over to Krista so that she can put the real paint on it. Here you go, doubles. Thanks. <laughs> it's all yours now. All right, see what I can do. All right, thanks, Dubs. While Krista is painting, I can start assembling the electronics. I used a label maker to change this pack from parallel to series. Now I need to wire it to match. Flux always helps the solder stick, and fume extractors are a must. I know this isn't the proper way to crimp, but it worked, so bite me. When working with these cheaper parts that we buy in bulk, it's always best to double check them just in case. We don't want anything unsafe to go out. This BMS actually wasn't working properly, so we had to yoink it off the board and install this one instead. With the BMS done, it's time to glue the component cup. Now that we're waiting on the glue to dry, let's go check up on Krista's progress. Hey, Bevels, how's it going? Hey, it's going pretty good. You want to check it out? Yeah. Man, that thing looks incredible. She's made a lot of progress. I'd better catch up. I've got to grab the DC barrel jack, the on-off switch, and the battery level indicator and put them inside of the component cup. The barrel jack is held on with a nut and I just use hot glue for the battery level indicator. Time to solder everything together. Now that everything is soldered, let's perform a quick sanity check. Remember, the BMS should need power input to wake up before it will output power. Hey, looks like everything's working. Noise. Hey, Dubs, I finally got the painting done. Check it out. Oh, wow, that looks really good, loves. I'm sure she's going to love this. I hope so. All right, it's finally time to put this thing together. Alright, let's hear how this thing sounds.
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please like, share, and subscribe. It helps the channel grow. For a full parts list and all the files to 3D print a component cup yourself, check the links in the description. I'd like to give a special thanks to my friend James for helping me film, and also to my sister Rachel for patiently waiting until February for her Christmas gift. I love you guys. Well, that's all I have for you today. Bye!